the VSEPR model applied to steric numbers 2 through 4, VSEPR part 3. Okay, so let's just remind ourselves of our basic molecular geometries. And we went through these in part 2, and we looked at all of the basic geometries and had it, were able to get a general sense of the basic shape and how it relates to the steric number. And so what we're going to do now is take steric numbers 2 through 4, so 2, 3, and 4, and we're going to look more closely at the different geometries that we can derive from those steric numbers based on the numbers of lone pairs on the central atom. So remember that we organize our molecular ge geometries into groups based on steric number, and we use the basic geometry to build additional geometries when lone pairs are on the central atom. Basically, when we have to put lone pairs on the central atom as opposed to bonded atoms, the shape of the molecule changes. And that's because we name the shapes based on atom positions, not on lone pairs. However, the lone pairs do distort the bond angle. And so we're going to talk about that, how those bond angles are, are distorted. And we're going to name the shape based on the bonded atoms and not necessarily the lone pairs, although they play a role in determining the basic geometry that we're going to be working with. And so we're going to see how all of this works. Okay, so here's our table of VSEPR geometries. And so all of our basic geometries are in the first column. And so we're going to just talk about 2 through 4. And we mentioned in the previous presentation, so I'll go through it quickly, that there's only one possibility for steric number 2. Now notice that as the steric number increases, we have more and more possible geometries. Okay, So for steric number 3, we have two different possible geometries. For steric number 4, we're going to end up with 3. Okay, so just to remind ourselves, we've already talked about this, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but for steric number 2, we, the bond angle is 180 degrees, so the bonded atoms are 180 degrees apart. That's as far as they can get away from each other, and we call this a linear molecule. So things get a little more interesting with steric number 3, and this is the basic geometry shown here where everything is a bonded atom as opposed to any lone pairs. If you look at this shape, everything lies in the plane of the screen, and there are three, and it looks kind of like a triangle, okay? So we call that a trigonal planar molecular shape, and the bond angles are 120 degrees. And like I say, we discussed this one previously also. But what happens when we draw the molecule and we end up with a lone pair on the central atom instead of a bonded atom. So what we're going to do is look at this. Okay, so you see that the steric number is still 3, okay, but now we have a, lo a lone pair instead of a bonded atom. And what that does, this lone pair takes up more space, is more repulsive on these bonded, bonding pairs, and it's going to distort or squeeze this bond angle together to less than 120 degrees and basically take up more than its share of room. So I like to say that lone pairs have sharp elbows and they push everything else out of the way as far as they can. Okay, so this bond angle is distorted to less than 120 degrees. And we call this molecular shape bent. And so you can see that it just looks like a bent molecule. Okay, and we do not include the lone pair in the actual naming. We only name the molecule shape after the bonded atoms. Or, you know, another way to think about it, we can see atoms, quote unquote, not really, but you know what I mean. But we can't, quote unquote, see lone pairs. So we're going to name the geometry based on the atom positions. Okay, so it gets even more interesting when we start talking about a tetrahedral shape. So this is steric number four. And remember, this is our basic geometry. We have four bonded atoms. Remember that this is coming out of the screen. That atom is going behind the screen. These two are in the plane, and the bond angles are around 109. All of them are equal, you know, assuming these are all the same atom. So all of these bond angles are equal, and they're undistorted. And this is the basic molecular shape, tetrahedral. 
Now again, what happens when we have a lone pair on that central atom instead of one of the bonded atoms? So you can see that the steric number is still four. We have a lone pair and three bonded atoms. But now, again, this lone pair takes up more than its share of room, so it's going to squeeze these other guys together more, and they're going to end up with a bond angle that's less than the ideal. So it's less than 109 degrees. So that lone pair repels those bonding electrons even more than the bonding electrons repel each other. So that bond angle squeezes together, and it's less than 109 degrees. And we call this shape a trigonal pyramid. So if you were to set this guy on a countertop, he would, he'd be a little pyramid, okay? And that's why we call him that. But again, we're naming the shape based on the bonded atoms, not on lone pairs. For steric number four, we can also have a situation where we have two sets of lone pairs on the central atom, all right? So one example molecule for this is water, H2O, so we have two lone pairs on that oxygen. And those lone pairs are even more repulsive. So these guys repel each other, plus they repel these bonded atoms. And so we end up with a bond angle that's quite a bit less than 109 degrees. So basically there's even more repulsion and the bond angle is squeezed together even more. And so we, this is a bent shape also. It has the same name as the bent shape for steric number three, except this bond angle is even smaller because there are two lone pairs with sharp elbows that are basically repelling these guys even more. And so that's gonna squeeze that bond angle together. Okay, so let's do a few examples. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna determine the steric number and we're gonna name the geometry. And you should also look for bond angles, so identify the bond angles and if there are any distortions. So go ahead and draw the Lewis structure for boron trifluoride and figure out the geometry. Okay, so here's our Lewis structure for boron trifluoride. And we're gonna look at the central atom and we see that it's bonded to three atoms. Steric number three. The basic geometry is trigonal planar. And also notice that, you know, everything is a bonded atom, of course. And so this basic geometry is the name also. It's a trigonal planar shape. All of these bond angles are 120 degrees. They're not distorted. Okay, so go ahead and try this one, the nitronium ion. Okay, so here is the best Lewis structure for the nitronium ion. So here's our central atom, nitrogen, and we have double bonds to oxygen. Each oxygen has two lone pairs, but for VSEPR purposes, we don't care about that. And one thing to keep in mind is that each of these double bonds only counts as one electron domain, or the steric number, it contributes one, each of those contributes one to the steric number, so the steric number is two. Okay, now the bond angle here, there's nothing to distort the bond angle. There's nothing else on the central atom. So the bond angle is 180 degrees. Now notice when I drew the VSCPR geometry that I didn't put the lone pairs on the oxygens and that's okay. When you're drawing the actual shape, you don't need to explicitly show the lone pairs like you do on a Lewis structure. The name of this geometry is linear. Okay, so here's another one, nitrogen trifluoride. So here's our Lewis structure for nitrogen trifluoride. And we have a steric number of four, three bonded atoms, one lone pair. And we would think that these bond angles are gonna be somewhere around 109.5. And that's true, except remember that we have this lone pair with sharp elbows that squeezes all of these bond angles closer or less than 109 degrees, okay? And it's because of that lone pair on the central atom. Also remember that, so this shape is based on the tetrahedral geometry, but we've, we have a lone pair on the central atom, so it takes one of the positions, and then if we name the shape based on atom positions, then we call it a trigonal pyramid. All right, so I'll post additional examples separately.